Hi guys, welcome to the Nayobin Podcast, brought to you by CBMM, Global Leader of Production and Commercialization of Nayobin Products. Uh, as you said in the introduction, and you see here in the podcast series, small amounts of Nayobin can transform the properties of material, and only small amounts of times can also transform your knowledge about material science. I have Kayo here with me. Hey, Kayo, welcome. Hey, Mauricio, very nice to be here. So, we're talking in the, in the introduction about the stainless steel, and this is one of the main subjects of the uh, podcast series. And when I think of stainless steel, I think of directly of that um, shiny polished surfaces of buildings and stadiums and facades and uh, very related to this construction thing. Uh, but what are the stainless steel? What, what is it, its story? Where does it come from? What is the stainless steel? So, hey, guy, talk to it. Yeah, thank you, Mauricio. A actually, this is a very good point. Uh, and we need to demystify this a little bit because, uh, of course, when we think about stainless steels, I think that the first thing that comes to our mind is this beautiful surface suspect, uh, corrosion resistance, the material that never, never gets corroded, uh, the usage in very premium applications like elevators, hospital, and things like that. And that's actually partly true. We're going to see a lot of that. But stainless steels, they are present so much in our daily lives. When we drive from home to work or to, from work to home, we're going to have stainless steels in our cars. When we get home, we're going to ha have stainless steels in our house uh, from the cutlery, from sinks, from the refrigerators, from washing machines, dishwashers. Uh, when we travel by airplane, we're going to have stainless steels in the airplane. If we're going to do a surgery, we're going to have stainless steels. Well, it's everywhere, guys. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. But uh, actually, uh, it's a funny story. Stainless steel was discovered by accident. I don't know if you knew about it. No, no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, actually, it's a very old material. It was discovered more than 100 years ago in 1913. Whoa. And it was discovered by accident. There was a researcher in the UK, uh, and he was investigating how to increase the erosion resistance of guns due to the First World War. And uh, he decided to add chromium to, uh, iron alloy, to an iron alloy, around 12% of chromium. And there you go. They discovered stainless steel for the first time. And well, think, and it's it's a very nice material because it's still shining. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, man. That's true. Actually, you have some applications that stainless steel was used in that time, and they are there until today. Chrysler, Chrysler build. Yep. Uh, this never... is one of the things that I think yeah. of. But uh, I, I think it's a good link to to talk about history because this twelve point eight content of st of chromium is really important. Uh, if we're going to talk about the basic concepts of stainless steels, uh, we're going to see that this material is a uh, iron chromium alloy. It's very different than carbon steels, but mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, stainless, it's our iron chromium alloy, and you have to have at least 10.5% of chromium in the chemical composition. Oh, and, and and the other materials can be like, what? The, does they different? That there are, are there more than one kind of stainless steel? Or there are many kinds of stainless steels. Actually, there are five big families. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but w why do we need this 10.5%? This is a very important point because with 10.5% of chromium, we're going to form a very thin, invisible, and we call that passive layer on mm -hmm. the surface of the material. So if you take the a sheet of stainless steel, you're going to look, you're not going to see anything on the surface, but actually there's an oxide layer on that surface. Oh. And it's that oxide layer that gives stainless steel corrosion resistance. That's very different than carbon steels, for example, because carbon steels, I'm sure you already saw carbon steels on the street and they're all corroded. They get rusted. The, the rust. Rust is an oxide, actually. Mm -hmm. Rust is an iron oxide. Stainless steel has also oxide in the surface, but that's a chromium oxide. Actually, if we zoom in in this oxide layer, we're going to see so many other elements. We're going to see manganese, silicon, but the majority of it is chromium. Uh, and coming back to your, to your remark, to your question, uh, we have many families of stainless steels, uh, five of them. We have austenitics, uh, we have ferritics, duplex, martensitics, well, and precipitation hardened. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of names. But uh, I think it's a good moment to say that all of this information that we're talking is going to be available uh, in our website. Yeah, this is the QR code, guys. So yeah. visit nayabin.tech, the stainless steel page. Yeah, but in a, in a very simple way, uh, remember when I said that stainless, it's a basic alloy of iron and chromium? Yep. When you start to add another elements in the chemical composition and also change a little bit the manufacturing process, 
you get other types of stainless steel. So iron, chromium, stainless steel, that's what we call ferritics. Ferritics materials, they are basically iron, chromium, and they have a few other elements. They have titanium, some of them they have moly, mm -hmm. very low levels of carbon and nitrogen. These are what we call 400 series, ferritic stainless steels. Uh, but the majority of stainless steels consumed in the world today, they are materials that we call austenitics, austenitic stainless steels. And we have basically two families. We have 300 series stainless steels, which they have iron, chromium, and nickel in the chemical composition. Mm -hmm. And we have the 200 series stainless steels. They have iron, chromium, nickel, and manganese. And nickel and manganese, they, I, I'm sure you saw these elements already in the periodic table. Yep. They are stabilizers of faustonite. We call these elements gamogenic elements. And we're going to see that niobium is the opposite of that. Niobium stabilizers ferrite. So uh, the majority of stainless steel produces, produced today, they are austenitic materials. So, that, um, so uh, as far as we are bringing to the guys here, so we're talking about the structure of the steel and looking at a microscopic, scale yeah uh and there's a lot of things popping in my head right now because we were talking about the construction but now we we feel like there's a huge family of the of the stainless steel yeah. so and you mentioned other materials other elements and i can imagine that the market it's big but having like you mentioned nickel and also titania we've seen lots of things coming in the news recently yeah. because yeah. of the sure. price volati volatility and is it like a challenge for for this for this industry? Is niobium can be an answer for this things? What 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 we can relate to this? In a, in a very short way, yes, this is a challenge. Uh, we are living complex time. Uh, but if we look back in history, we saw a very high volatility in some of these elements. Uh, we're gonna see after the the crisis of two thousand and eight. Uh, some some of these elements reaching peak prices and the same movement is starting to happen again. For example, if we take a look, you mentioned nickel and titanium. Uh, if we take a look in titanium, only in 2022, this material has increased almost 100% the price. Uh, and uh, we see so many new technologies that are going to use nickel, for example, battery technology mm -hmm. is going to be a huge demand for nickel in the future. So that's also something that brings volatility to the market. And that's normal. We see volatility, but that's a very good benefit of Niobe. Niobe is very stable uh, and Niobe is widely available. So short answer, and we are going to learn this in the podcast, guys. Niobe is an answer for this. And Niobe can bring so many good benefits. Is not okay. Yeah. <laughs> Niobe can bring so many good benefits to stainless steels as we're going to see. Not only corrosion resistance, but so many others. Uh, and uh, uh, as I, I am an enthusiast of stainless, we're going to see so many more applications with Niobe in the future. And any, any, because you, you mentioned the batteries for the, for the nickel industry, uh, but it's like that, like, what are the, the main applications of stainless steels in, in this industry? That can, is this something that we can relate also to the other, because we talked about construction, but yeah. when in mobility, you mentioned also the hospitals, is it something related to the hygiene uh, aspect of the material? That's a, can you bring more, more information about it? That's a good point. Uh, but before talking about that, I think that's important for us to make a quick parallel to the carbon steels market. If we take a look in the carbon steels market, we're going to see more or less roughly every year 2 billion tons of carbon steel being produced. When we take a look in stainless, uh, we see more or less last year, actually it was a record year. The industry saw uh, production levels never seen before and the companies that produce stainless steel saw very good results uh, because the demand was very high. Uh, we, we saw roughly 60 million tons. So we can see already there a difference in terms of volumes of production. Uh, and remember the families of stainless steels that we talked before? Mm -hmm. uh, we still see that more than 70% of all the stainless steel produced in the world is still austenitic materials. Uh, and we see uh, uh, around 20% for ferritic materials and the rest is for the other families. So duplex, precipitation hardening, martesitic stainless steels. So this is a very quick contextualization of the market. Well, coming back to the applications, Mauricio. Uh, actually, if we take a look uh, in the, the, the stainless steel market, it's a very dynamic market. Uh, actually, let's take a look 20 years ago. If we look 20 years ago, China uh, almost didn't produce anything of stainless steels. 
But if we look last year, 2021, remember that that was a record year of stainless steel production. Uh, China represented 56% of all the stainless steel that pr was produced in the world. So you can see how dynamic this market mm -hmm. is. So many new players are coming. So many new applications are, are being invented. Uh, and if we look around China, the Asia Pacific region, like Japan, South Korea, Indonesia, India, uh, we're going to see that together with China, they represent more than 80% of all these things still that's produced well, in the world. And is there like any specific uh, characteristic of why Asia? No, actually, Asia, uh, historically speaking, uh, stainless steel was very concentrated in Europe and North America, but we're going to see that the demand changed a lot in those regions. Stainless steel consumption is also very linked to the power of consumption of people. So as the countries started to develop the GDP, also the demand for stainless steel started to increase. So you're going to see so many new uh, demand for stainless, so many new applications for stainless in those regions. Uh, but you, you asked me about applications. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that more than half of the stainless steel steels that are consumed today, they are consumed in two segments, white goods and capital goods. So things related to our own consumption. So dishwashers, sinks, refrigerators, cutlery, uh, tanks, things related to food industry, how to process food, how to keep food. Remember that stainless steel uh, has a very big bactericidal mm -hmm. characteristics. Uh, so I would say that this is half of all the stainless steel consumption in the world, white goods and capital goods. If we take a look in civil construction, we're going to see our, an infrastructure together with civil construction, we're going to see something close to 10 to 15%. Uh, if we see mobility, we're going to see another 10 to 15%. And and normally are the applicants, because I'm very curious about this thing with um, austenitic and the phreatic. Well, what is the, the main I believe the main market for us. So you mentioned something, but it's like an industry where it's more yeah. used one type of stainless steel. Historically, uh, austenitic stainless steels, they are very flexible. They can be using several of these segments because uh, the, we're going to learn in this podcast, we're going to see that the, the characteristics of the materials, they are, they are really very flexible, but it comes with a cost. These materials, they have an elevated price. Uh, and after 2006, 2007, Ferritic materials, they started to gain more and more space in the market. Today, they represent around 20%, and they are also used in almost all the market segments. They are used in white goods. So, for example, if you take a look in your cooktop uh, surface, it's ferritic material. If you take a look in your refrigerator, it's ferritic materials. If you take a look in your dishwasher, that can be ferritic. If you take a look in the exhaust system of your car, that's a topic that we're going to explore a little bit. Uh, the, the benefits of Niobe into the application. Niobe can enhance the, 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 the temperature performance of the material. This is something that I'm curious of. What is the role of Niobe? Because you, you're, you're mentioning Niobe enhancing the, 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 the properties. What, how does Niobe yeah. does that? That's the key point, right? That's why we're here. But uh, I think that that could be explored in the next episode. So this is it, guys, for the first episode of the Niobium Podcast. We already know what we're going to learn from Kaya for, for the next episode about the magic behind Niobium how it enhances the properties of the stainless steel, how is it used. So in the meantime, check Niobium.tech. There's a QR code here, more than 580 items available about Niobium technology and the materials technology. So thank you very much and see you guys. See you guys, bye-bye.